This is the video update for the Unitarian Church of Lincoln. Today is Tuesday, August 3rd, 2021. I'm the Reverend Oscar Sinclair. I'm recording and posting this in a bit of a waiting moment for us. Last week, the Lincoln-Lancaster County Department of Health raised the COVID-19 risk dial for the first time in a couple weeks, and cases since that update have gone up again. They're, they're at their highest in the past week that they've been since somewhere in February of 2021. So the health department is going to update us again this afternoon in a few hours at 3.30. Chances are, by the time you actually see this video, uh, we'll know more than we know now. But in the meantime, in this uncertain moment, I want to share this reflection from the Rabbi Rachel Berenblatt, who wrote this yesterday. And it captures more than just about anything else I've seen the uncertainty of this moment for religious institutions. So Rabbi Baron Blatt writes this. I was driving to the, cem to the cemetery for the unveiling and dedication of a headstone when I realized why there was such a tangled knot in my stomach. It was because of the news articles I'd been reading about the local COVID outbreak at North Adams Commons and medical predictions that the summer coronavirus surge will get worse before it gets better, and the news that the Delta variant is more contagious than chickenpox, and reports from the COVID outbreak in the 95% vaccinated Provincetown. I want so much to be able to gather for hybrid services for the days of awe this year, which are in September. The small synagogue I serve has developed a plan to limit capacity to 50% on site, socially distanced and masked with doors and windows propped open for airflow. We've invested in a big screen so I can use the SlideShare Moxor for both for those on site and those participating online. We're working on equitably ensuring that each member gets to be on site for at least one service of their choice. Our plan seemed reasonable early in the summer I don't know if it's reasonable now. So many people around the country have refused vaccination. The Delta variant is so contagious that even vaccinated adults can spread it. And because so many refuse to vaccinate or even to mask, and some governors have made it illegal for local municipalities to mandate masking to protect the vulnerable, more variants will evolve and the finish line of reaching safety keeps getting further away. My heart sinks. And so my stomach ties itself in knots. Driving to the cemetery, I realize I feel like Chidi Anagonye, the ethical philosopher in the TV show The Good Place, who gets anxiety stomach aches. If unvaccinated people can spread the Delta variant, if vaccinated people can spread the Delta variant, is it ethical for any congregation to seek to gather for the days of awe? One could argue that anyone who can't, comes to services on site is aware of the risks and is taking those risks willingly. But what about our extended circles and what about our unvaccinated children? How responsible am I for the safety of those whom I serve? I believe that we are all fundamentally responsible for and to each other. That's part of what it means to be an ethical human being in community which is part of why I can't understand those who refuse to mask to protect other people. But do those of us in positions of community leadership have additional responsibility to make communal decisions with the needs of the other, especially the needs of the most vulnerable in mind? This morning I turned to deep breaths and quietly singing words of prayer in my car, and I managed to untie the inner places that felt knotted up in anxiety. We'll make the best decisions we can. The pandemic is far from over, and I suspect we're facing another long winter. At the, under, at the end of the unveiling, one of the mourners who was there pointed to a, new, a nearby grave with an obviously new stone, a friend who had died of COVID. As I drove away, she was placing a memorial pedal, pebble on that friend's stone. So this part's now me. In some ways it was easy 
back a year ago to close down our building indefinitely because we didn't know what was going on and congregational safety is paramount. And in that moment, we could simply close and say, we'll figure it out. It's harder now. A lot of folks, a, a lot of our folks, a lot of you are vaccinated. And we know enough that each of us has gotten comfortable or at least familiar with our own risk calculus around what we will do and what we will not do. And that makes it harder. Yesterday I told my gym that absent a mask mandate, while it's been nice to be back this summer with them, I won't be returning until cases drop again. On the whiteboard behind me is a draft congregational schedule for May and June of 2022. It's the planning work that we usually do over the summer, but this year, instead of being full with dates set in stone, it's got a whole bunch of question marks on it. There's opportunity in this. It's a spiritual discipline uh, in a lot of traditions to exist in the moment, not worrying about what has happened yesterday or what will come tomorrow. But I also understand that it's one thing to practice living in the moment as a spiritual discipline, and it's entirely another thing to be forced into living in the moment by circumstance and uncertainty. So bless you all. This is hard, and it is good to be in it together. We'll see you on Friday um, with more updates if, uh, if we have them. Otherwise, have a great week, and I will see you on Friday and Sunday.